Hey everybody and welcome to this, my first of three videos on the Nikon D5000. That is a dirty, dirty lens. All right, that's not any better. Okay, so the Nikon D5000 is an interchangeable lens DSLR. What that means is the lenses can be taken off and put back on at any time when you're not taking a photo without issue. Uh, unless you're me and you can't hold on to a lens, that's a different kind of issue. It uses a CMOS APS-C sized 12.3 megapixel sensor. Now what that means is that it uses a CMOS Im uh, Im image sensor technology. The size is APS-C, which is smaller than full frame, and it's a 1.5 crop factor APS-C, and the recorded megapixels are 12.3. The burst mode frame rate on this is four frames per second. I could not find how many images uh, it stores, or maybe I could, and it's just later in the video series. Uh, anyway, I don't have at this point in the outline that how many images before the buffer is underrun. The ISO range on this camera is 200 to 3200. Low ISO is, uh, low 0 0.3 is 160, low 0 0.7 is 125, and low one is ISO 100. High three is 4,000, high 0.7 is 500, and high one, uh, no, high seven, high 0 0.7 must be 5,000. That's a, t uh, oops. And then high one is 6,400. This also does D video at 720p, so a very old standard. It's not really gonna cut it for video use today. The shutter speeds on this are 30 seconds to 1 4,000th. The viewfinder magnification back here is 0.78x with 95% frame coverage. Now what that means is that let's say that what you're looking at right now is what makes it to the image sensor. You're gonna have about 2.5% on each side and the top and bottom that will be on the image sensor but not in the viewfinder. That's the 95% frame coverage for the 78% uh, image size, you're going to have a reduction of, uh, you're going to the image is going to be smaller in the viewfinder than on the sensor. It has a Nikon Type B bright focusing screen with the autofocus points, center weighted metering circle, and an optional framing grid. That's the focusing screen in there. And the flash sync on this camera, whether you're using the on-camera flash here, or if you're using an off-camera flash. Is this even turning on? Well, if the flash pops up on this, oh, come on. There we go. Flash sync, whether you, you're using the on-camera flash here, or you're using an off-camera flash, is going to be 1 200th of a second. The Nikon D5000 was designed as an upper entry level camera. What that means is that, uh, so basically Nikon's tiers are D3000 at the time was the entry level, D5000 was in the middle, D7000 was at the top, and those represented the entry level to mid-level cameras. They were the APS-C lines. I can't remember off the top of my head if there were higher end APS-Cs than the 7000. But at any rate, this was right in the middle of those three. It was made by Nikon in Thailand from 2009 to 2010. So at this point, as of this video's making, it's getting a little bit long in the tooth coming in at a decade old. But that said, it's still plenty suitable for use in stills. The stills from this camera can be used in 4K video. It was preceded by the Nikon D60 and it was concurrent with the D3090, 7300S, 703, 3S, and 3X, and it was followed by the 5100. So if you have your Nikon D5000, let's do as we do on this channel and go over all of the features on the camera. So on the top here, 
we have the strap lugs on this side. And these strap lugs work with a lot of different types of straps. If you have a split ring, you can put them on, on here like this, and then you use clips to attach to the um, strap lugs, or you can use clips directly to do that. Or if you don't have clips, you can just take a strap with an end like this and wrap it onto the camera and permanently affix the strap to the camera that way. I mean, not permanently. You can take it on, on and off, just can't do it very quickly. Here we have the flash, which we saw it pops up, flash hot shoe. This little white line here is the mode dial index telling you which one of these items you're selected to. This is the mode dial. M, A, S, and P are your um, manual and semi-automatic modes. And then the rest of these are automatic modes. And we'll go over these in detail in video two as to what it is that they do. Info and green dot button, exposure value compensation and uh, depth of field preview button, on off button or switch more accurately, shutter release. On the camera's front here, we have a few different things. This is your infrared receiver. So if you have a remote control for your camera, this is where the re remote control's infrared will be received by the camera on the front. So you can stand in front of your camera and use it. Autofocus assist light. This is your lens mounting ring. This, uh, forget what it is this switch is. Do I have it? I do not have this. Um, written down. I know this has to do with AIS lenses. I can never remember what it is that this switch does. Um, somebody will comment in the comments re reminding me what it does. Lens mounting index, lens release button, pop-up flash and flash compensation button, function and self timer button, model, and is that the microphone or the speaker? on-camera mic. That's the microphone for recording audio with your videos right there. On the camera's sides, we'll start over here on this side, we have your HDMI, AV, and GPS cable connections. And we know that because they're labeled, thankfully, because I can never remember what these are. So that's your HDMI port, that's your AV port, and that's your GPS dongle port right there. On the other side, we have the SD card port. That's all that's on that side. On the camera's back, we have a bunch of different stuff. Up here, we have the delete button. Here's the viewfinder. This is the viewfinder diopter adjuster right there. This is your auto exposure lock, auto focus lock button. This is your rear command dial right here. Did I miss the, no, there's no front command dial. Okay, good. I didn't miss something, at least not yet. Play button menu button, thumbnail playback button, playback zoom button, uh, zoom button right here rather, information button with the green dot, so the two green dot buttons do stuff pushed together. We'll get to this in a second. Live view button, okay button, cross pad, speaker. This little light right here tells you that your SD card is being written to, and this is the flip out viewfinder, or uh, screen. I will tell you when I was uh, shooting my Pentax K7 and later K3, which I had about the time that I got the K7 when this was popular, I was so envious of people who had this screen. Uh, this is even uh, still today, this is super nice. So you can rotate it out and you can have the screen just showing like this so that when you are doing stuff, you can actually I don't actually want to set the date and time right now. You can actually see what's going on on the screen, or if you don't want to be bothered by that or save battery or not have the screen damaged by having it click against your uh, belt buckle or something, you can fold it over and protect it. Super, super nice feature. On the camera's bottom, we have the battery. Let me turn this off before I do anything else down here. We have the battery chamber here. And we'll see a little bit more in the second video, but here's the battery. It's pretty much the standard entry level uh, Nikon battery, the, what's it called again? E-N-E-L-9-A. -E 
And if I recall correctly, this little doodad right here, let me open this back up. Yeah, this pops up. So if you have the AC adapter, that's where the AC adapter cable goes. So you can close the door with the AC adapter in. Right here we have your maker information, serial number, these are all the registration stamps, and your tripod socket right there. So some notes about, and actually the, some of these are some fairly important notes about the Nikon D5000. There was a recall on the D5000 for a power system issue. However, if you did not act on that recall, it's too late to now to obtain a free re repair under the recall. Nikon is no longer repairing the recall issue for these cameras. So that means that if you have one of the Nikon D5000s that has the power issue, you're going to have to send it off to a repair shop to have them put in the parts that are required to correct that issue, and you'll have to pay for it out of your own pocket. That's it for notes. Some things not to do with your Nikon D5000. So don't touch the mirror on your camera right there because if your finger oils get on it, you can desilver the mirror, which will affect things like your autofocus and metering and viewfinder brightness. Also, don't stick your finger behind the mirror to mess with the shutter unless you're cleaning it, um, the sensor that is. And we'll talk a little bit more, I believe that's in the third video about that. Um, second video, maybe, anyway. Um, unless you're, so don't touch the mirror unless you're cleaning the shutter don't touch the shutter. I'm sorry, unless you're cleaning the sensor, don't touch the sensor and never touch the shutter. Don't store your camera and gear in a plastic bag or box unless you have a rechargeable desiccant pack because uh, moisture can get into these and fungus can grow on the lenses especially and you don't want that at all. Don't let the camera get wet. This is not one of Nikon's weather sealed models, if I recall correctly. And just remember that your Nikon D5000 is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So that's it for the first video on this camera. Uh, the second video will cover what everything on, we talked about what everything is. The second video is gonna cover what everything does and how to take a photo with this camera. And then in the third video, we're going to go through all of the different menu system items and what all of the menus are and how they affect your photography. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.